All right, I've gotten myself into a little bit of padding trouble here. As you can see, there's a little more padding here than I want. And part of the problem is that I have got here in my styles, I've got some padding on the major div and that creates padding on each of these, right? Each of these individuals. And then I also have some padding here on the major container. So essentially, I've got really a lot of padding on every container. Let's take a peek at it in the inspector. Well, let's just look at the individual containers first. So let's see. If I mouse over my container div, you'll see that green padding there on the, oh, I have to stay here. Look, I can point with my finger, but you can't see that. You can see the green padding on the container div. And what you can see is the padding left that I put on the container, but you can see the padding right that's on every div. And then if I go down to the egg, you can see the other padding that's in there on the egg container. So I need to deal with that, this little padding mess. What's the best way to do it? Let's talk about that. I'm going to go into my index and think about it. How can I say that I want the egg, the cat, the Chris, uh, that adult, how can I say that I want all of those to be styled together? So the answer is to use the comma selector. So I'm going to come up here and uh, I'll go right above these and I'll say egg cat Chris oops I spelled that wrong spelled it like a person and adult so now I've got uh, a group of divs that I've separated by a comma and a space. And I'm going to take this padding off of the major div and put it here. So that's one way to start. Save, refresh. So it worked. It, it took away the padding that I wanted to take away, but now I have to rein this in. So let's talk about that. The container needs a little more padding on the right to bring that in. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking probably about 75 pixels. So uh, let's try that. Let's add another little bit of padding to my container div. There we go. That looks much better. So not surprisingly, I just, this is what this particular video is about. There is another way to do this and it would have been a little simpler and it's called class. Okay. One reminder, an ID is unique and it can only be used as you can see here on one item. Here's an ID for container, there's an ID for egg, there's an ID for cat. Here they all are here used multiply, but an ID is unique and it can only be used once. Think about your student ID, right? You can only have one. Whereas a class can be reused. There are many people in your classes. So I don't know if using your student ID in your class is a great example, but I'm gonna create a class here. And in each of these, I will type back here on my index. Let me go to the top, starting with egg. I'll type um, class equals this. I'm on my HTML page, my index.html. So as you can tell, I'm going to use the format of the attribute style. And I'll name my class section. Class equals section. And I'll add it, there it is on egg, I'll put it on cat, 
I will put it on Chris and I'll put it on adult. So there it is in my HTML save. No difference. Nothing changes there because I haven't created a style yet for my class. So let me come over to my styles and create a style. I'm going to comment out this particular Let me move that down. I'm going to comment out this dot section. Oops, I'll have to spell it right. Dot section. So this, as a selector, is replacing all of that as a selector. The dot is the uh, CSS indicator for class. In the same way that the hashtag for ID. So let's look at this. Let's save it. Save and refresh. No difference. So yes, we could have left this and I put it in there so that I could explain to you what multiple um, selectors, how they work together. But a class is an easier way around it. All right, onward.